Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the ENFJ. If you're new to this series, check out the playlist under Fashion Psychology. This is where I do a deep dive into each of the 16 MBTI types in terms of what they wear, how their cognitive function manifests in terms of their clothing choices, what would they stereotypically look like through their fashion sense, this is a stereotypical way of looking at how each MBTI is like but this topic has picked up in terms of a lot of people's interest in wanting to know how can they identify themselves with those personality types, how can they dress better and because at the end of the day, your personality type dictates how you present yourself to the world. Some people have missed opportunities because they don't know how to create an image that best represents their personality traits and therefore a lot of times people misunderstand them. We all judge the book by its cover as much as we try not to do that First impression is formed in less than 7 seconds. It is important for us to put ourselves out there as authentically as possible. But there's also the other side where sometimes being truly authentic may not go towards your advantage and how can you then emulate certain personalities to help you to get what you want. I know that this can be a controversial or a sensitive topic because this is somewhat of social engineering but if you are into psychology and you are into understanding not just yourself or other people better, we are all trying to create a more harmonious relationship, trying to see from the perspective of other people. A lot of times when we are unable to translate that through the things that we say, the things that we wear, how we really show ourselves to the world, you really miss out on things that are meant for you. Therefore, I thought that there's this interest when it comes to how would an MBTI dress and how is this related to their cognitive function. So this is what the video is all about. So let's talk about the ENFJs. They are known to be the most motherly type, nurturer, the mentor, there's even a nickname, advocate, although that is also a nickname for INFJs in 16 personalities. From the nicknames, you can gather that ENFJs are people who are striving for harmony because of their hero function, extroverted feeling, FE. Extroverted feeling or FE is all about harmony, it's all about the relationship of people. Users are very attuned to their own emotions and the emotions of others. Now, not to be confused with FI, which is introverted feeling. So that would be your ISFPs, INFPs. Those two MBTI types have FI as their hero. Of course, there are other MBTI types that also are FI users. It's just that for FI dominant, they are very in touch with their own feelings, but they may not entirely be caring about what other people feel. But for extroverted feeling, because it's channeled outwards, they prioritize maintaining the harmony and balance in their interactions with others and they make decisions based on group feeling, group values. It's whether or not there's an impact in terms of forming group cohesion. They are generally very empathetic and responsive to people's needs. So they really try their best to foster a sense of belonging, of unity. So I like to kind of, well, joke a little bit here and there in terms of ENFJ because I do know a lot of ENFJs in my life for some reason. I think the universe is trying to tell me something. I have people who are close to me, family members who are ENFJs and they are just naturally talented or aware of social norm, like what is appropriate and what is not. I know some of you, if you are ENFJ, INFJ, ISFJ or ESFJ watching this, you'll be like, why would people not know social norm? Don't be surprised. We, we have MBTI types that are totally unaware of what is a social norm. So they express their values that is quite congruent to social environment or community's values. So it's not about deviating and trying to stand out and trying to be a rebel in this case. In general, they are very expressive in terms of their communication. If they feel a certain way about you, I think they are 
this is another stereotype, but some stereotypes allow us to have a deeper understanding of their similarities on their preferences. At the end of the day, if it helps us to understand it, I don't see why not. ENFJs, I believe their love languages is physical touch, if not words of affirmation. They really need that. You need to show it, you need to express it. I've interviewed a lot of ENFJs asking them about their pet peeves. If they see someone trying to rebel, go out of the social norm and cause chaos in a group environment, they become very uncomfortable. It is not what they're in for. And especially when you ask them to suppress their emotion and not express it, I think that becomes a super pain point for them. They tend to avoid conflict. Obviously, the ENFJs with certain focus in their life or motivation will deal with conflict. Not saying that they are totally conflict avoidant. It's just that they will try their very best to not even cause the conflict. If you want a deeper analysis, how all this cognitive function, all about ENFJs, you can check out CS Joseph. I think he does amazing videos explaining the psychological side of things. I want to stick this video to the style analysis or the fashion topic. You can also check out my Udemy course. I review all the MBTI types in terms of how their cognitive function affects their clothing style and then what should they be wearing in order to meet their potential. So links in the description box below. I'm going to be reviewing famous people who are typed as ENFJs. So this is obviously from CS Joseph. I will be giving you my professional and even personal opinion about what I really think of their stereotypical ENFJ style. So if you're an ENFJ and you're watching, this can give you a sense of validation, guidance, a bit of direction, understanding that whether what you have in your wardrobe is working for you according to my opinion. And I will also be giving recommendation in terms of what do I think ENFJs lack of in terms of their clothing sense, what could they do differently in order to meet their potential, in order to look their best. Now let's go to CS Joseph, famous people. Not a lot actually, ENFJs that are typed by him, but we're just going to pick a few here. I'm going to start with the men ENFJs. I actually know a lot of men ENFJs in my life. They tend to be very caring. They remind me of motivational speakers. They see the potential in you because they are the idealist type, right? So obviously they look at social possibilities. They are very people oriented. And so if you happen to have an ENFJ a coach or a mentor or a boss, you will be taken care of for sure. I can say this with 99.9% .9 accuracy. So the men ENFJs that I have on my list is actually Nelson Mandela and Robbie Williams. So I'll start with Nelson Mandela. If you check out his clothing style or his personal style, there's this pattern where it's all about very folkloric, nostalgic, vintage kind of prints. It's very artsy, it's vibrant. The colors itself is very warm. In general, it gives me a very agreeable, open, sociable vibe, which I think it's very much aligned with what ENFJs are all about. But obviously, this is a stereotype because your clothing style is also derived from the influences your, of your social environment, of your profession, of who is around you that would nurture how you dress for Nelson Mandela. In terms of prints, this is one of the most significant elements that I've noticed. If you look at Robbie Williams, he's very different. Initially, I was like, Robbie Williams is ENFJ. I couldn't believe it either. I really tried to dig through the images. Obviously, I try to ignore the event images or whenever Robbie Williams is on stage because this kind of dressing is influenced by the stylist. And they want the celebrity to look a certain way, which may not be very accurate. I look for photos like those paparazzi shots that celebrities don't want people to take. It's more their natural self. If you look at Robbie Williams, he has similarities with Nelson Mandela. It is prints, patterns, exuberant, quite whimsical. It's artistic. It is someone that is expressive. You wouldn't just meet this person wearing this way and say that oh, they are an introvert. It's so obvious that this is an extroverted thing. If I'm not mistaken, ENFJs have extroverted sensing in their cognitive function, the higher 
parts of their cognitive function. If I'm not mistaken, it is their function, their child function. Am I right? ENFJ, FE, I just want to be sure because nowadays people are questioning me about whether I know my cognitive function or not. <clears throat> That's the thing about psychology because it's metaphysical, right? I don't know if you will ever really know the truth, but okay, I have it here. ENFJs, FE, extroverted feeling, NI as a second function. Their third function is SE. It causes them to obviously focus on their physical surrounding. They are very expressive, very engaged with certain physical things they perceive. They get stimulated by it. I know ENFJs that when they see me wearing something very different from what I usually wear, they will be the first one to emphasize, amplify, and like, oh my gosh, look at this color on you, I love it. They love to just romance with their SE. I think it's not surprising to say that they love to look at and embrace things that looks very artistic, very creative. It stimulates their sensory experience. And maybe this is why they're so open to colors. They cannot really tell you if they have a particular color they love, which is very similar to ISFPs. Now, moving on to the women ENFJs, I have two that I purposely picked out because I see such similarities or connection between them. The first one is Britney Spears. Once upon a time, I was very into Britney Spears. Who is not? Especially if you're a millennial, you know what I'm talking about. And so I think Britney, yes, she's a super pop star. Obviously, she dresses in a way where there's a lot of stylists behind what she does and they try to put her in things that are the trendiest, the latest, or even try to be a trendsetter because that's how Sometimes fashion works, right? If you look at her other photos, ENFJ women tend to have this super feminine but yet casual, relaxed kind of vibe. I think they are inclined to street style but in a commercial way. What I mean by commercial is that it is socially accepted by many people. So for example, like wearing jeans and something that is flamboyant on top, it's going to make it look less outstanding compared to, let's say you wear a very flamboyant colored top and then you wear it with leather pants or something really out there. They know how to balance out looking socially acceptable but at the same time injecting their own individual style or their artistic flair to it. In general, I really just love how they balance trying to show their sense of style but also not making other people uncomfortable. So if you look at Britney Spears, a lot of jeans and playing a lot of trendy pieces. I think this is where I would say that ENFJs are naturally inclined to wearing the current trends. They are not going to be the, the ones to start the trend but they will just conform easily. But please, if you are ENFJ that maybe is a stylist or maybe focus on different parts of your mind, Maybe you're more individualistic. I'm not saying that all ENFJs are like that, but in general, this is a guide. The next ENFJ is actually Hilary Duff. Now, do you see a difference between the two of them? I really don't. And when I look through Hilary Duff's outfit choices, clothing preferences, a lot of jeans, a lot of street style influence, but it's very commercial very lifestyle in terms of someone living in the city, sneakers. But there's one thing that I can't shake my head off, which is linking back to Nelson Mandela, Robbie Williams, is this love for prints. They really go for prints. Even this bohemian print, anything that's feminine, very artsy, quirky. Okay, I wouldn't use the word quirky because quirky can be a bit more offbeat and sometimes throw people off. But they go for prints that are socially acceptable, that is safe, that it's pleasing to the eyes, universally pleasing to the eyes. So what do I think of ENFJ style as a whole? We can all learn from the fact that they know how to conform to society. They know what is the value and the social environment. They are very aware of that. And they dress to have that unity and belonging and they don't try to rebel and Try to be so individualistic that it makes people uncomfortable. That's what I love about them. These are the people that will truly respect dress codes. When you invite them to a wedding, to a special occasion, 
they will respect your dress code and they will be the fashion police if someone shows up at a wedding trying to overshine the bride they will be the social justice warrior. So I can conclude that a lot of ENFJs are pretty stylish. They have their own sense of style, but it's the kind of style that is optimistic, that is not too dark, that is light. It blends in with the trends. They know how to have fun with colors and prints. And there's a bit of nostalgia vibe too, because they try to bring back things that are vintage, a bit more retro. I think that's what they enjoy. Maybe it's the whole storytelling. Maybe it's the part where they have introverted sensing as their trickster function. All in all, I still link it back to their hero function, extroverted feeling. They are the kind of people that would wear to impress, not just to make themselves feel comfortable, but it makes other people feel comfortable, which well, nowadays, we all try to find our individual style. We try so hard that we are not modest, not respectful, not demure. But I think the ENFJs, they exude all these traits. So what do I think can be improved when it comes to ENFJ's natural or stereotypical style? I think I have styled uh, clients who have more of extroverted feeling. They may not entirely be ENFJ's, but ENFJ vibe, meaning they dress to agree to other people, they dress to conform. So sometimes it depends on their profession. If their profession requires them to be more assertive, make decisions really fast and be a bit more dominant, sometimes dressing too commercial or dressing too relaxed may not help them to look credible. In a way, what I'm trying to say is if you are ENFJ that has a lot of pastel colours, warm colours, accent colours, pop of colours here and there, you love pinks, you love red, you love mixing all these colours, or you have all these prints that consist of multiple colours, sometimes if you do not know how to balance it out, it may make you look like you're too playful, too agreeable, too open. Anything that is done to an extreme can be a weakness. So I would say that if you're ENFJ and your goal is to maybe a be a bit more reliable, more competent, more assertive. You don't want to be like a pushover. I understand sometimes when you have extroverted feeling, you have this like, mm, why am I doing everything for people? Why am I not saying the thing that I want to say? Or why are people not taking my opinion seriously? Am I too giving? If you face those issues, you might want to try to adopt styles from ISTJ, ENTJ, ESTJ because they tend to inject a bit more authority and power to their dressing sense. Again, disclaimer, I'm just stereotyping. So this is general advice for ENFJs. Of course, it really depends on where you are at your journey of life and there are variables to different types of ENFJs, your profession and your lifestyle. This is where a style consultation comes along but this is just for you to have a bit of awareness about you as an ENFJ, this is how you function, what do you wear to translate that or maybe if you are already wearing those traits, is it helping you to achieve the things that you want in life? the environment at work, your personal environment, or perhaps emulating a different type can help you to get what you want. Anyways guys, I hope you found this video useful. Please help me share. This will really help me to continue to give you interesting, insightful contents about fashion psychology in future. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!